Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at Logitech's somewhat of a classic set of speakers. This is the Z533. Let's take it for a test drive. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at Logitech's Z533 speaker set. Now this is a 2.1 setup with a kind of umbilical cord for control for your volume, for your bass, all that kind of stuff, and also for plugging in auxiliary devices, and also, if you want to, a set of headphones, which seems kind of odd that you're buying a set of speakers in order to plug in a set of headphones, but it certainly does offer up a certain level of flexibility, so you can uh, rock the house during the day, and when you're gaming at night, then you can plug in a set of headphones, and not destroy your relationship with your neighbours, or your siblings. So we'll take a look at the packaging, go through the unboxing process, see what we get, see how easy it is to set up, then we'll do some practical audio tests, and then I'll come back at the end with my final thoughts. Now first of all, I will mention this set of speakers isn't actually mine, these are one of our Discord members, David Aiken, and he's actually allowed me to do the unboxing on this, and he's uh, waiting to see how well they do and whether or not he spent his money wisely. Now talking of money, at the moment here in the United Kingdom, on Logitech's own site, these are retailing for around about £90, which actually is quite a big jump in price from one of their original prices, which was around about £60. So these have been around on the market a little while now, something like 2016, maybe 2017. So they have been on the market a while, which is often the case with Logitech products. They generally keep them going, and even some of their older models, uh, even 10 years old, you can still buy today, which is a sign of, I suppose, their commitment to quality and also the longevity of the products themselves. Now, talking of longevity, these actually do come with a two-year warranty as well, for those of you in the United Kingdom and European Union. Obviously, around the world, your uh, guarantees and warranties will possibly differ. So, as it says straight away, you can see on the box, it does say that they are the Z533 speaker set, and also there is a marker there for a whopping 120 watts. Now that is the peak power output, and realistically they are 60 watts RMS. So that tallies out to being 15 watts each for the satellite speakers, and 30 watts for the subwoofer, which I think for most people is more than enough to uh, create a little bit of noise and distraction. For the real audio files out there, they may be looking at this and thinking, Puh, Logitech. But these are actually really good. I've seen some reviews already, and I've known people that have owned them, and actually having a previous set of Z-series speakers in the past, I can tell already that these are going to be absolutely great. So some of the key highlights of this is uh, highlighted here. So you've got multiple inputs. So you can plug in a 3.5mm device, so be that a mobile phone, perhaps a PC, laptop, etc, etc. Basically anything with a 3.5mm jack, maybe an iPad, that kind of thing. And also there is a set of RCA jacks on the back, so you can plug in other devices, or maybe put this into something like a television, basically anything with those red and white connectors. There isn't any switch on the device to actually select between the devices, so essentially whatever's plugged in will pretty much be playing. So obviously do take that into consideration. If you're planning on having this set up with maybe an Xbox connected on the RCAs and the PC on the 3.5mm jack, it will basically play whatever's attached to it. And the same goes for the auxiliary input, which is actually on the umbilical. On the back of the device, it goes into a little bit more detail on the individual features, and it highlights the kind of subwoofer and some of the features. Again, it goes into details about the 120 watts. The one thing I would like to have seen on this is actually more detail about the frequencies that it actually responds to. Both on the box and actually on Logitech's side, there's no information whatsoever. So uh, yeah, you're gonna have to kind of guess it by ear. So let's go ahead and take it out of the box and see what we actually get. Now, first of all, we're greeted by this on the top, so it gives you a kind of uh, semi-detailed kind of IKEA-esque explanation of how it all goes together and what you should expect to see in the box. Sadly, for this particular unit, uh, seems to be the way of things these days, there's actually no installation manual or instruction guide. This is essentially it. So when we actually manage to get these things out of the box, we're greeted by various options. So we've got, obviously, the subwoofer itself, and the umbilical cord goes through to the control box. Also, you get a UK power plug with a figure eight connection on it, and also you get a separate box with the two satellite speakers. So first of all, let's take a look at the subwoofer itself. So as you can see, subwoofer cap on it, looks really nice. You've got a kind of grill on the front there, which is a fabric mesh, and the actual casing itself feels like it's probably MDF, something like that's relatively heavy. Also, size-wise, looking at just slightly over 10 inches wide by approximately 10 inches high, and a depth of approximately seven and three quarter inches. 
The unit itself is finished in this kind of uh, typical kind of satin matte finish. Uh, doesn't appear to be a fingerprint magnet, which is nice to see. And uh, moving around to this side, we can see the tuned base port. Moving around to the back of the device, so we've got, this is our main kind of IO section or connectivity. So in the top section here, we've got our traditional red and white RCA jacks, so left and right channels. And also underneath that, we've got the outputs for the speakers. So again, color coded blue for the left channel and black for the right channel. Also in the middle though, there is a 3.5 mil jack, again, stereo, so that's for plugging in various devices. Again, you can plug in combinations on there. You've got the umbilical cord, which is actually connected. So if it does get damaged, then that unfortunately is gonna be it. There's no way of actually removing that, which is a shame. And just below that is the connection for the power jack. The actual control box itself is on a, a pretty long cable and generally is around about two and a half meters long. So if you wanted to, you could actually put the subwoofer maybe under your desk, have the satellites on top and still have access to your controller. The controller itself is uh, again in that kind of satin matte black finish. And this is a combination unit, so if you turn it, there is a click to turn the actual device on and off, and you just rotate it to increase or decrease the volume. The actual control wheel itself does feel a little bit on the lightweight side, so if you accidentally nudge it, it is going to adjust slightly. I'd like to have seen that a little bit stiffer, but okay, it should be absolutely fine. Moving on to the side, this is our base control, so it's currently set in the 50% section. So you move that down, that's zero base. Move it all the way up, maximum base, and somewhere in the middle is 50%. The bottom actually has a rubberized pad, so that will stop it slipping around on your desktop. And also there are two jacks. So as we said before, there is a headphone jack, so if you want to use headphones, you can do easily without having to reach down to your PC or plug into those IO ports. And also there is an auxiliary input. So if you've got another device, say an older Android or Apple device, where you have got 3.5 mil jack, you can plug it into the side and use that as your auxiliary input. Moving on to the speaker section. So the box that contains the two satellite speakers, again, left and right hand speakers. Also there is a 3.5 mil cable for connecting up devices. And also there's some regulatory information. Again, no installation manual. Looking at the speakers themselves, so each speaker has a kind of RCA type connector for plugging into the back of the subwoofer, and the cables themselves are actually not overly long. So if we fold them over in half, so it's roughly, I would say, off about two and a half meters, so not particularly long, depending on what sort of desk you've got. If you are mounting the subwoofer onto the floor, you may find yourself needing some RCA extension jacks just to give you a little bit more length on the cable. It isn't a problem, but again, it is one of those kind of things you would have been nice to have seen if they included an RCA cable actually in the packaging would have made life a lot simpler for connecting up things like Xboxes, TVs, and also for extending these if need be. If you're planning on keeping the subwoofer on your desk next to the speakers, then it's going to be absolutely fine. But again, if you're putting it on a floor or you want to put it somewhere slightly out of the way, then you're probably going to need some extension cables. The speakers are finished actually in a really nice kind of finish. You've got this kind of satin matte top and side sections. Also, there is the uh, traditional Logitech glossy black finish, which is on the sides there, and also around the ring for the speaker itself. One thing about the Logitech plastics that I've noticed, uh, particularly on some of my other speakers, they are prone to micro scratching. So when they come out of the box, first of all, they look absolutely brilliant and completely blemish free. But even using a microfiber cloth for cleaning, you do find you get those kind of micro scratches in the plastic. So over time, they will start to show their age. The actual speaker unit inside here is only around about 55 mil, so it's not particularly big, but as most of the higher frequencies are gonna be put out through the subwoofer, this should be absolutely fine. I would have personally liked to have seen maybe a grill cover to pop on the front of there, just to kind of cover it up a little bit, just to give you the option if you don't particularly want to see little highlights of gold on your desktop setup, you could blank those out, but again, not really a deal breaker. To some people, they may find the gold accents actually very fitting. The speaker itself, as it's on the desk, has a very slight backward lean to it, which is gonna be good. So if you've got it on desk facing towards you, there is a slight angle towards your kind of head area and also towards your ears, which obviously is gonna be beneficial for audio. The speakers themselves are just a shade over seven inches tall, so not particularly big. And they are marked up on the back with the L and R. So if you're not too sure, you know which one they are. And on the bottom, you've got again, those foam feet to uh, prevent it skipping around on the desk too much. And they do move around a little bit. There is a little bit of movement there but the foam really is more for absorbing vibrations in your desktop. 
The included power cord for this particular unit is about two meters, so you will need to be relatively close to a power socket. But being this is the traditional kind of figure eight lead, then you can get extensions of these, anything up to five meters or so if you wanted to, very easy to get hold of, or obviously just plug it into an extension block. So that's all the bits unboxed. Let's uh, see how it all goes together and actually see what it sounds like. Okay, so let's get it all connected up. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do. So first thing to do is to choose your input. Now we're gonna be using a 3.5 mil jack. So we're gonna use the supplied cable. So that goes into that jack there. And the other end will go into your laptop or whatever your input device is. So that is that section done. For the speakers, again, very simple to do. So they are color coded. There is a right and a left. So this is the right one. So that goes into the black connector. And the other one, which is here somewhere, is a blue color cable. So that goes into the blue. Very, very simple. The last thing we need to do is to plug in the power connector, which again is a figure eight, which plugs into the bottom. So that is essentially it. If you want to, at this point, you can also plug in RCE connections and connect those up as well if you want to, but this essentially is the basic setup. Okay, so with it all set up, um, this is crudely set up on the desk just to get an idea of what they actually sound like. So first we'll do is to turn on the speaker. So Turn that around and you get a little LED on the front there to let you know that it's actually on. Again, if you want to, you can plug in another auxiliary device should you need to. Now I'm gonna set the volume level to 50% and the volume, difficult to get a gauge actually, which one. So let's set it to about a third and see what that's like. So we're gonna go through some of the uh, YouTube free music, which uh, is copyright free, so we don't get into trouble in that regard. So in a moment, the laptop's set to 80% on the output, base at 50%, and actually it does sound, it does sound very, very warm. There's a lot of depth coming from that subwoofer. Again, it is a 60 watt uh, peak output, 30 watts RMS. So it actually has got, that is basically only on. So let's put it on, see what it'll go to. So that is on full blast and the floor is moving. That is very, very loud, especially in a relatively small room. This room is about three meters by four meters, so not the biggest of rooms and our neighbors, unfortunately, are just behind that wall. So we'll probably get a knock on the wall shortly. There's an incredible amount of warmth there. And the off axis uh, listening range for the speakers actually doesn't make a great deal of difference. So they're relatively wide dispersing. So uh, let's try another track. Just surprising that a bass apparently to come from these. There isn't any bass ports on the back. I don't think it is actually coming from them. I think it's just it's giving you the illusion that the subwoofer is actually the port for the subwoofer is facing me, so that is going to be helping out here. And yeah, again, even off axis, they sound really, really nice. Here's a track some of you may have heard. That's going down low. That's with the bass down low, well, 50%. And that's on uh, maximum. Let's, uh, let's dial that back down a bit. It doesn't need to be that much. Actually, with the bass off, that is what is coming out of the, uh, the two satellite speakers. So that's yeah, very tinny sounding now. 
And even with just a, a very tiny amount of bass in there, it does change the sound profile altogether. Very good. I actually used this a long time ago in some of my old YouTube videos, which uh, yeah, you may be able to find. So this sounds a bit more instrumental. actually feel that on my chest. Now obviously I don't know how this is coming across uh, due to the fact we're recording this with uh, a lav mic so obviously you're not going to get the full experience unless you actually set these up for yourself but already uh, yeah it's got a really near the bass drum in this tune. So having the, uh, the bass adjustment on there is actually really, really handy because you can tailor it rather than having to find your subwoofer and adjust it manually or grab your Windows control panel and make any adjustments there. Having that on the side actually is really good. Now one thing I did want to try is to see actually if the pass-through for the microphone does actually eliminate the noise from the speakers. So let's try that now. So we'll plug that into the earphone. And yes, it does. So some people, um, I have seen reviews where they've said that they've plugged in microphones or headphones rather, and the sound hasn't passed through. That sounds pretty weedy now. Um, yeah, that seems to work absolutely fine. So that's all good. So yeah, very, very nice. Let's uh, stop that a moment. So yeah, overall, I've got no complaints there bass-wise. If you're into your bass, then yeah, you're definitely going to love this. Price-wise, that is going to be the real defining factor. If you can pick them up for um, some of their previous prices, around about the 60, 70 pounds mark, I think you've got an absolute winner. Logitech's site at the moment saying 89.99. They are actually out of stock currently, so you won't be able to get them there. But do shop around. I did notice earlier, uh, Argos, I think near us in the UK, we're selling them a little bit cheaper and Amazon are doing some better prices as well. So do shop around. Don't just assume that because Logitech are selling them, they're going to be the best price because generally they ain't. <laughs> so hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully the music has come through nice and loud for you and you can appreciate what it sounds like. If you like your bass, definitely take a look at these. If you want the simplicity of uh, a 2.1 setup and this really, really nice jog dial, definitely, definitely take a look at it. So this has been the Logitech Z533 speaker set 2.1. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section. I'd be really interested to know what you think. And uh, to David, yep, you made a pretty good decision there. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.